You've seen that when spacecraft come back to Earth, the heat dissipates the kinetic energy of the craft. This is where the Earth's atmosphere is doing the work to slow us down. Until it can just deploy parachutes and and land Gently smoothly. waft down that, to correct. the Earth's surface. Unless you're Russian. In which case, you just crash into the Earth. <laughs> they don't land in water. That's right. They, they land on dirt. Yes. Okay. Because we are Russian. <laughs> People tend to think that this re-entry mm -hmm. is some very scary part of the trip. And we wish we didn't have to do this, but it's a necessary evil of coming back to Earth. Well, I mean, it's easy to see why you would think it's a scary part, because every time they show anything coming into the Earth's atmosphere, it is on fire. It is on fire. Right. But you're thinking, oh, my gosh, it's too bad we have to go through this. Right. No. That's the wrong attitude. Ah. We are glad we're going through it. Okay. You know why? Mm. It means I don't need fuel to slow down. Oh, there you go. That's right. Because when you land on the moon, you got to... Yeah, you need retro rockets yeah. so that you land smoothly. Right. There ain't no air on the moon. Exactly. So re-entry of Earth's atmosphere is functionally aerobraking. Nice. How to take your energy of motion and deposit it somewhere else. Using the atmosphere as brakes. As brakes. Otherwise, the Apollo astronauts, in that, their case, mm -hmm. or anybody, would have had to have carried fuel from their original launch pad to the moon, back to Earth, so that they can slow down. Right. So the early heat shields of the Apollo capsules, right, right and others, but were ablative. So they were layers like an onion. Nice. Of material that would burn. Okay, so you're burning off layers. Good, right, exactly. That's brilliant. And the layers are very insulative. So the outer layer, when it burns, right. it burns completely, and then the next, the layer, next layer burns. kicks in. Right. Okay? You don't want to burn the whole thing all yeah, at once. Yeah, because that's... <laughs> that, that's not going to work. Okay? <laughs> so so it was an ab ablative heat shield. And what, what it meant was, if you just come out of orbit, you're going five miles per second, 18,000 miles an hour, right. to go to zero. But if you're coming from the moon, you're re-entering at seven miles per second. Wow. Okay? That has twice the energy as five miles per second does. Right. You know how you know that? No. Take five and square it, what do you get? Five, five, 25. Take seven and square it, what do you get? Um, 42. Forty-nine. Thank you. Okay. So forty-nine is, is twice twenty-five, basically. Okay. Basically. So, so energy goes as the velocity squared. Nice, okay. That's called the Earth's escape velocity. Right. So if you fall towards Earth from very, very far away, by the time you hit Earth, you are no, going to escape, escape velocity. Because velocity. that's the velocity you needed to have gotten to where you were in the first place. So It's okay. symmetric that way. It's very beautiful that is very in cool. the equations. Is there a limit to that velocity as you, is there a terminal velocity? Yeah, seven to? miles per, that, you, that's it. If you fall from the edge of the universe to Earth, right. you'll hit Earth at seven miles seven per miles second. Seven miles per second, so that's it. That's it. Woo! If it's Earth gravity that's right, that's the gravity. Because far right. away is very weak. Right, you know, exactly. It's no, right no big deal. Yeah. So, in other words, yes, if you fall from the edge of the universe, you're going to hit exactly Earth's escape velocity. If you fall from the moon, as far as the equations go, that is tantamount to the edge of the universe. <laughs> right. <laughs> <You> might as well. <laughs> most be. of the energy that you're going to acquire from falling to Earth happens in the last bits, not in most of the early stages. Okay. So, gotcha. so that's why it's 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 loose, but it's accurate enough. For the example. So the astronauts probably went 6.8 miles per second okay. to, to get to the moon. Oh, but it's close nothing. enough to seven. Right. It's close <laughs> enough to seven. So the point is, this velocity squared, right. what's the first equation you ever learned in school? I don't know. That's uh, Equals mc squared. That's of true. Of course you did. That's true. What is the c in that equation? It's a constant of the speed of light. It's a speed. And what are we doing with the speed? Uh, e equals mc squared. Square. We're squaring We're squaring it. it. Right. And what's on the other side of the equation? Energy. E so right. the energy goes as the velocity squared. Look at that. And that's just You've known that, that from birth. I didn't even know it. You didn't even didn't know. Didn't even know I didn't even know I knew that. That's right. Look at that. There you go. That's awesome. Okay. So you have to dissipate twice as much energy. So the shields on the Apollo capsules that came back from the moon right. were at least twice as thick. Gotcha. And you just ablate. You just, you just you're, you're peeling them you're off. You're peeling them off. Just peeling so them it off. It was very easy from an engineering 
point right. to increase the heat resistance of the capsule. Yeah, you just put on more layers. Just put on more layers. Yeah, exactly. you don't even have to change the material or anything. Exactly. Just put on more layers. Okay. Smart. So now, in modern times... By the way, that's brilliant. In God, modern that's... times, they use the material in sh the shuttle tiles. Yeah, we saw that. We, we saw the shuttle. The yeah, shuttle, we, we, right? we went to uh, Los Angeles. We saw the uh, California Science Center. Yeah, the Endeavor. The Endeavor. The Endeavor is on display was, there. The Endeavor. It's in captivity right. in the California Science Center. So those... Are, it's not ablative because they want to reuse right, materials. Right. So this material, you can take a blowtorch to it. Right. It's red hot. Put the torch down, return to it, and it's room temperature. That's really cool. Yeah. So it dissipates heat rapidly. Right. As it gets hot, it's radiating away while it gets hot, like in real time. So oh, that's it's a cool. beautiful thing. That's very cool. So now you're in orbit. You want to get out of orbit. Okay. You need some kind of thing to slow you down a little bit. Right. So that the atmosphere can kick in. Okay. So you slow me down a little bit. I drop to a lower orbit. Right. Where there's a few more air molecules. Right. Now the air molecules are now hitting. They're hitting me. Okay. Right. I don't have to use my engines anymore because you're hitting air. That's slowing me down. Slow me down a little more where the air is even denser. Slows you down even more. A little more. more. Even denser. Slows right. you down more. This is a runaway process. You want to do this mm -hmm. where it's not going to hurt anybody. Right. Earth happens to have nearly a third of all of its longitude spanned by the Pacific Ocean. Nice. There's Hawaii in there and the Galapagos. Oh, and you know. A couple of islands. Right. Nothing we really need. <laughs> no, no, stop. Yeah, so, no. So, but the total area of non populated ocean right. is huge. That's great. So, you start your deorbit at a place where you then plunk the thing down in, in, the, the, in the Pacific. In NASA's toilet. The Pacific is the great. Toilet bowl of space, yes. Unless you're Chinese. In which case they say, whatever happened. So what happened with the Chinese boosters yes. was they did not have a means to control their deorbit. Right. And they were just sort of ambling wherever they happen to pick up enough molecules mm -hmm. to drop them. That's where it is. Right. And we got lucky. So you want to have a little bit of fuel. Just a little. To tell it when to start that deorbit and then drop right. it in the Pacific. And if you don't, it's actually... Irresponsible. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And that happened with several Chinese boosters and, and rocket parts. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So that's that's all it that's all deorbiting is. That's really cool. It's why you need fuel to land on the moon, yeah. but you don't need fuel to land back on Earth. Because Earth's atmosphere is your braking system. Aero braking. Aero Treat it as this is a beautiful thing. There rather than go. oh my gosh, will they survive? I don't mm. know. Well. It's dangerous. Hey, Chuck Nice here. You know, generally, I'm known as an upbeat, happy, smiling guy, but I have a confession to make. For a long time in my life, I was faking it. I was hiding behind a smile because I didn't want people to know that I was depressed. I also felt ashamed and stigmatized, but then I decided to reach out for help and talk to somebody. And I found out there was no need for me to suffer and be alone. The professionals that were helping me made me realize that it wasn't a me thing. It was a chemical thing in my brain. And that allowed me to get over the stigma and find a solution and treatment that actually worked for me. So now when you see me smiling and happy and upbeat, it's because I actually am. And that's why I want to encourage any of you who might be feeling similarly to how I once was to go out and seek help because you're not alone. Thanks to our sponsors at BetterHelp, in just a matter of days, you can now get set up with a licensed therapist who is trained to listen and provide you with helpful, unbiased advice. And the best part is you can do this all from the comfort of your own home. Whether it's through your computer, phone, video chat, or messaging, it's just that easy. Visit BetterHelp.com slash StarTalk or select StarTalk at sign up to receive 10% off your first month of finding a solution that works for you. And from all of us here at StarTalk, we wish you well. One last thing. Yes. The space probe Cassini. Yes. Which was sent to Saturn. Saturn. Spent 13 years orbiting Saturn, That's visiting right. moons. Taking pictures, hanging doing out, all kinds of things. Taking good stuff. pictures, and then we were done with it. Yeah. So you know what we did? Yeah. We deorbited it. Nice. Okay. Into Saturn. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. But 
It didn't have heat shields. Okay. Oh. So it burned up. Vaporized. Look at that. We didn't want it accidentally slamming into one of Saturn's moons right. that later on we want to see if there's life there. Right. Before we know somebody sneezed on on the spacecraft. Right. And it goes to the And we killed all the life on, on a Saturn moon. <laughs> with our sneeze with virus. With our sneeze virus. <laughs> <A> little... <laughs> so that's a case where it was deorbited, but with no hope of survival. Gotcha. Now, when it's time to take this the space station out of orbit. Okay. That's a big mama jama. That's, that's huge. That do you realize the space station has the area it's the extent of a football field. I did not know that. But when you include the solar panels <laughs> okay. and all the modules. All of it together. All of it together. Football field. All of it together. Wow, a football the, field in space. Yeah. There'll be a day when we're done. Right. We are in the Now, do they bring partners. that whole thing down at once? Or do they? Or it's not it, designed to be brought back in one piece. Oh, snap. If you're going to deorbit any of it or all of it, you're going to plunk it into the Pacific it, right. as you, as you we, we did everything else. And not the Chinese way. That's what the Chinese we gonna do it. The, we gonna do it American way. America, we'll do this right. And keep it. It's been up there for twenty five years, something like that. Look at that. Yeah, I know. So uh, we're proud of it. Uh, but there comes a time when we have better technology, better computing, yeah. better materials, right. better everything. Right. And you and we'll do it. So that means we got to put another space station up there. Possibly China's already making a space station. Oh, no, station. no, no. Yes, they are. No. They're making their own space no, station. Listen, I'm not trying. You know trying, why? Because they, they were not invited to participate in the International Space Station. Well, then that means that we got to go ahead and do our own thing. I'm just saying they weren't invited and they went off on their own. You know why we didn't invite them? Because we know that when it comes time to deorbit, they're just going to crash it wherever the hell they want. Okay? Is that why we did this? Okay. okay. So it wasn't the cited human rights violation. No, right? exactly. No, it wasn't yeah, any of that. Yeah, right. None of that but, stuff. Like, will you allow me one conspiracy theory? What's that? I don't think we really cared about their human rights violation. Okay. Because every country's got some issues, right? Oh, no. All right? Everybody All right. got problems. Everybody got problems. Everybody okay. got problems. I think we knew that if we didn't invite them, they would go up and do it all by themselves. Right. And create their own space program. Okay. And if they did, yeah. that would create a space adversary to us. And now we can continue to do what we exactly. gotta do. Right. We yep. got the just like we did with Russia. Yep. The Soviet Union. Right. We had a a space adversary. Yep. I, that, that's my one little conspiracy. And, well, theory. listen, I, I I'm gonna give you that. I don't and think then they that's told the, the Chinese are doing it, so we gotta now do we it. Now we gotta too. do it too. Congress mm -hmm. writes the checks. Hey, look at look at commercial space right now. Just based on what you said, we used to hitch a ride with the Russians. Now all of a sudden, we got this whole burgeoning whole industry. The called, whole thing. What, and by the way, China said they want to go back to the moon, and we said, Oh, oh, oh it's guess time. what? We already there. <laughs> <laughs> we're already there. <laughs> so we got the Artemis we, program. We're going we got back. Artemis. To the moon. We're going back. All of a sudden, this blooms out of nowhere. Yep. There you go. The fertile ground was we have an adversary. Right. A friendly foe. A friendly foe. That's it. That's what we do. Because we're, of course, trade partners with China yes, and everything. exactly. But, so, there it is. Yep. Now, if only Taiwan gets a space station. <laughs> a space station. <laughs> all right. That's all, all right, we got time for. Go. Uh, this has been uh, yet another explainer. Thank, thanks, Chuck. Oh, no, that was it. fun. All right. Neil deGrasse Tyson here for Star Talk. And by the way, we are recording in my office. A Cosmic Crib. I don't think the authorities would, would, would sanction yeah. that. Gotta go for it. At, uh, in my office at the Hayden Planetarium of the American Museum of Natural History, otherwise known as the Cosmic Crib. All right, Neil deGrasse Tyson here. Keep looking up. <laughs>